Let's take a look now at how to balance our processes across a series of use cases. Because one of the most difficult things to do in use case modeling is how do you know you've got the right use cases? Because in essence, you're breaking a system up into multiple processes. And how do you know you're dealing with the right number as you go through? So if we start with, say, on an ATM application, we have an account holder who wants to go use an ATM. You could take a look at a use case and say, well, how does the customer use the ATM? Uh, I say, well, they visit the ATM. So perhaps that's one of the ways you could start doing a use case. It's not the right way, but it's not an unnatural way to approach it. So how do you know when that's right or how do you know when that's wrong as you see your way through? Well, one of the rules of thumb you apply is a rule we learn in requirements management. And that is that there's never a requirement for a system. Uh, systems are responses to requirements. So you can't have a requirement to have a system. And therefore, you can't really have a use case as simply the using of a system because it's really the same thing. The point is, what are you doing with the system, not are you using the system as you go through? So typically for the ATM, we would want to explore what exactly do you do with an ATM? So one of the syntaxes of a use case, you don't have to use this every time, but you can list other smaller use cases that are included in the broader use case. So this diagram says that visiting the ATM includes withdrawing cash and making deposits and checking balances. So that's one way to approach the problem as you go through. But realistically though, Doing it as an include, listing those processes away to the side, that hasn't really solved the problem that we've made one of the requirements that we have a system. So we haven't gotten rid of the underlying problem, although we have clarified things and we go through. In ontological terms, if I were using ontologies to govern my requirements, I would view visiting the ATM as a process aggregate. It's putting things together that are really the leaves. So visiting the ATM really isn't um, a use case in and of itself. It's an aggregate process that puts it all together. What have I done if I go to the ATM and withdraw cash twice and make three deposits and check four balances? In aggregate, those steps would be the visit to the ATM. But use cases aren't about process aggregates. They're about actual use cases as you go through. So ideally, that should be getting that process aggregate out of the picture, letting it emerge during the requirements. They, the account holder simply has three use cases, three reasons they go to the ATM and make uses of it. Um, now this still has a slight feel of the ATM as a device and I really want to think of the ATM as a system. So I should be asking myself as I get rid of the process aggregate, okay, we establish our process list, but is it complete? Okay, did the process aggregate include any additional usage of the system that's been lost because of what I did as I went through? And my answer might be yes. As I explore the requirements and talk to my stakeholders, I might find in addition to these three things, one of the things the account holder has to engage my system to do is to find an ATM. Uh, where is the ATM I'm going to go to is part of the process of going to the ATM, particularly if I'm in a place where I don't go to the, uh, know where the ATMs are. I mean, I'm traveling or something of that nature. So really the use case for an ATM from an account holder standpoint has to include engaging the system to find one. And our system design is going to have to make sure we enable that function as we go through. So that deals with the process aggregate. It's, it's a give and take as you go through. It takes practice to get it right. Uh, but don't let yourself pull in, in this case, it's not just about interacting with the device, it's about interacting with the system. And finding the ATM is the first step of any time an account holder wants to go and engage the AT ATM as a, a stakeholder. So let's look at another example. Um, a departing passenger who wants to fly out of an airport. So you've got an airport departure system for going to the airport and getting on your flight. And what does that system look like as you go through? Well, we could say that the system includes checking bags and obtaining documents and clearing security and visiting the lounge and ultimately boarding the flight. So that's one way to view it, but is this the right combination of processes? Um, could I have done a different list? Could I have put some of these things together? Because one could say, well, this is kind of the five steps I go through every time I go to the airport. So why am I listing it as five different use cases as I go through? Now, I think this list is correct, or it's more or less correct than a lot of other options. So let's explore. If you're a novice to doing use cases, how would you know this is the correct response as you go through? Um, 
one of the ways to view it is that use cases are really a first step toward a more detailed process mapping approach that you might get to during your preliminary system design. So maybe you're doing a use case during conceptual system design that you will eventually come back and do process mapping during your preliminary system design. So if that's the case, we could start to pick up some of the rules of process mapping and proactively start to apply them as we're doing our use cases. So if I try to anticipate the process map for my airport departure system, which gets into a lot more detail than a use case and really puts things together in terms of their inputs and outputs. This might be what the process map will eventually look like. So it makes sense that my use case had in fact five steps to it as I see my way through. So process map delineates the steps of a process and its criteria in the process mapping world. So the dependence or independence of the steps as I would define them for what triggers them, why do I do each step, and to what extent are the processes to independent of each other in terms of their inputs or outputs as I go through. So we have pretty rigorous criteria in the process mapping worlds for making sure we have the right steps. There's nothing to stop you from anticipating that. Even if you're not drawing the process map, apply the same lessons to your use case as you go through. Uh, so the rule can really be used to delineate what happens in your use case. If I look at my use case diagram now, if I apply those rules of process mapping, I'll, I'll realize that checking the bags or obtaining documents might have happened independently of each other. It could have happened anywhere in the process. Um, I could clear security and go to the gate and check my bag there and obtain my boarding pass there. So the, the order and use of these process steps might be completely different, making them distinct processes. I might have printed my boarding pass before I even went to the airport, so I don't need the obtain document step. Visiting a lounge, I can visit a lounge that's before security or visit a lounge that's after security. So there's reasons why these five steps, even though I initially said, well, these are the five steps you always go through when you go to the airport. I shouldn't say you always go through them. I should say you typically go through these five steps in this order but there are lots of exceptions and those exceptions are why these process steps these use cases should be kept separate in the in the in the use case analysis is that each is more or less independent even when i'm doing them in order the fact that i've checked my bags and obtained my documents doesn't necessarily tell me when i'm going to try to clear security it doesn't tell me if i'm going to go to a lounge or not uh, so these processes are more independent than they are not, and therefore grouping them together would actually be a disservice to the process design. So that challenge of knowing when to put process steps together in fewer of them or when to split them apart into more of them is a nuanced skill set. I draw a lot on process mapping um, as one of my tools because process mapping is an even more detailed way to attack some of these things. So some of the heuristics of process mapping pay off really well in a use case. But the bottom line is it takes practice, it takes a little skill. The more you know about your system and when it would be used, the better. Um, generally, if you're in doubt about whether two steps can be combined, chances are they shouldn't be until you've really explored it going through.